Thank you so much for joining us here at Queer at Heart. Today we have Ronnie uh, Azar. Ronnie, do you guys know who Ronnie is? So Ronnie, you pioneered the dog boot. And I want to talk about that so hard today. <laughs> because the episode is called Guess What? Your Dog Might Be Gay. We're going to get into that. But you're also the person who pioneered the dog boot in the mid-90s. So you have a dog company. You have a dog clothing apparel company, which is all online. Right. Neopause.com. Neopaw International. Neopaws in no, just Neopause.com. Okay. So Neopaw.com. And what inspired that? What was like you must have had this I mean, some real great love for dogs to come up with a boot and it do so well. And you must have been it's like selling thirty million records or something and people caught on and you Yeah, know. that's pretty much what happened. Um it was pretty interesting <laughs> because uh, I always wanted to be a veterinarian, oh. amongst other things, a psychologist, journalist, police officer, <laughs> truck driver, whatever, right? Um, and then um, I was in my own business. I owned a restaurant and a shop, importing goods from Mexico, decorative goods, uh, in Yorkville Avenue, mm -hmm. on Yorkville. Yeah. And... I was also very active, right? I used to go to the gym and um, always running around. And then I got this dog from Mexico. Yep. His name was Mex. Oh. The love of my life, the very first dog. I had always wanted a dog. And uh, growing up, my mom was just like, wait till you grow up. <laughs> like, okay, fine. Which is actually a good idea. Um, like a lot of Arab parents? Like a lot of Arab parents, yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah. La, 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 la. yeah. Um, and then... We started, Mex and I started rollerblading together, right? So he would run beside me uh, through the city. And one day he came back and there was blood all over the floor. And I was like, what? Why aren't there running shoes for dogs? I'm going to do it. What year was this? 1990. Oh, wow. This yeah. was 30 years ago. Yeah, almost. I, I think we're on like 29th year. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh my God, it was 30 years ago. Yeah, um, 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it and was amazing. And then, you know, from there, um, I used the resources of knowledge of the materials that I used to use in my athletic moments at the gym, the neoprene. And then I realized neoprene is great for the winter. I didn't even think about salt and snow on the floor. We hadn't gone through a winter yet, right? Yeah. So the neoprene uh, uppers with the rubber soles, which transformed perfectly over a five, four, three-year per period, um, then I was like, oh my gosh, we need summer shoes. So I made shoes made with mesh. So now we have four styles of shoes, two summers, two winters. Mm -hmm. And also we um, sell greatly to the dogs who, which drag their paws. So we're orthopedic as well. I think primarily um, we're very well known in the industry for that. We're recommended by veterinarians daily, so which is wonderful worldwide. So that's really my claim to fame with the shoes. Uh, then, of course, I created the seat belt, the life jacket, all the safety apparel. So Neopaws is leader in safety pet apparel, basically to protect your pet. Mm -hmm. And yes, everyone then caught on. Everyone yeah. caught on. And so, like, did it take... 15 it years. To catch on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I, and, and the money that I spent in advertising monthly when I first started, I could have been living at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, honest <laughs> to God. And then all of a sudden, everyone knew about dog shoes and, you know, for whatever different reasons, uh, they just, you know, infiltrated the market. And our shoes are a bit more complicated because there's a process of how to put them on. They're not just a flat piece of thing material that you just and then there's one strap it's a system we have a layering system you know you have to like you know put the paw right to the tip of the shoe and mm. so for pet stores uh which we we sell wholesale as well worldwide mm -hmm. but you know pet stores if they're not owner operated and they have to depend on people working for them it becomes more complicated because they have to learn how to do it we even have videos how to put your shoes on right so I take my business very serious. Um, I know you do. I always said I was Nike to the dog world. Uh, the shoes are <laughs> phenomenal. They're definitely by far the best in the world. They'll still remain to be. Mm. The materials that we use are all high quality. And the most beautiful thing is that they stay on. So they that, on. yeah, that's, that's the most, that's what people always say. Oh, but do they stay on? Yeah, they stay on. <laughs> so, and that's really important. <laughs> Especially for the winter because yeah. of the salt, right? Yeah. And I mean, well, anytime, you know, you're out in the riverbeds, you're out hiking, you want the shoes, you're on the mountaintops of BC, you know, 
uh, you want the shoes to stay on. You don't want to start trekking. But the thing is with us is that I always tell the customer before I let them go, I'm like, always remember that if the shoes are not staying on, it's not the shoes. <laughs> mm. And it's a chuckle. And they're like, okay, we'll watch your video. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, so w- the thing here is that you pioneered this shoe. Um, it sold very well, like 10, 15 years later. And then everybody has started to come up with the shoe. By the way, uh, Rose, the first lesbian I've had on my show. Yeah. Can we just, can yeah, we just, I like, pioneered this too, right? <laughs> I'm like, Mo. This is me. I'm like, Mo, why don't you have any lesbians on your show? And I want to be on your show. I know. And I I, I was just thinking, you know, this is great because for everybody watching the LGBTQ community, please go to Roe. You know, it's it's a safe space for anybody who doesn't feel space, trans people who don't feel feel safe going uh, anywhere else. Please go to Roe because Roe's awesome. And your mother also works with you. Yeah, we work together. She runs the shipping department and in my retail store. So we have a retail store at River and Dundas. So it's Neopause. And yeah, so people can come in for sure, which is really exciting. And we have a lot of uh, queer clientele for sure. I mean, every second person that walks through the door. is Every second. (laughs) That's 50%. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what, sometimes maybe even more. So like, okay. So dog clothing, dog shoes, you know, you're building a wellness center right now in yeah. California. Mm-hmm. Um, I and wanna... my TV show too, the YouTube show. The YouTube show, what's yeah. it called? Uh, Healthy Cooking with Roe for You and Your Pet. So basically, I design recipes to cook for yourself and your pet at the same time. So you can save time and it's not a big obligation. People think, oh, you know, if I'm going to cook for my dog, it takes too much time. I can't do it. No, no, you can do it. You must do it. It's, mm. it's, it, it's vitally important. So when we go through this, you know, we're going to talk about the benefits, right, of having a dog, being gay and having a dog. Is mm. your dog gay? Is and dog and gay? how are you going to take care of your dog so mm. that it's happy? Yeah. Right? And well taken care of. It's a two-way street. Mm-hmm. No, it is. It's 100% a two-way street. And we were going to get into um, basically the importance of, okay, having a dog. So number one, we know that dogs have helped, you know, I would say especially people within the LGBT, it's helped a lot of LGBT people because a lot of the times growing up, we are rejected by family, by friends. And so our pets, it's so imperative, it becomes, they become such an imperative part of our life, yeah. you know, as such a healing part of our life, which I think most people who are watching um, can yeah, relate identify, to. Yeah. yeah. And whether you're gay or not, I'm sure you can ident- identify with this as well. Um, but you have four tips for having a dog, the four healing tips for having a dog. And one of them is, the first one is, it's good for your heart. In every way. Right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, I think these, the tips are very obvious to us all. And those who have dogs would understand that, um, not only is it good for your heart, as you said, because the dogs love us unconditionally. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how beautiful you are, how not, how skinny, how active, how it's just the love is always there. The right? love is always you don't, there. You don't have to prove yourself um, only to yourself, mm. you know, and to your animal because the reflection of how much the dog will love you and appreciate you and how well trained the dog becomes is a reflection of how good of a job that you're doing. For sure. Right? Because they so, feed off your energy, right? 100%. And there are, a lot of dogs are empaths. Mm. So, you know, people who are constantly agitated, their dog will also, you know, probably pick that up. So we have to be careful how we're dealing with that. And then, you know, being good for the heart, it's imperative that dogs, no matter what size, mm. um, get out and walk. Um, many times daily, you know, mm. I think it's it, it incredibly important. It also brings people out um, of their closets so to speak right like it makes you go out right so it's good because people who are dealing with anxiety and stress um even children with autism who show no emotional connection with humans have had dogs where they're actually being emotional with them Mm. right so very important so healing yeah so exercise Love, but I was gonna say also the reason why, like when I was reading uh, the the tips you had, it's also because it lowers your cholesterol, uh-huh. right? Which yeah. makes it good for your heart. And this is a, this is something that was also uh, uh, an article written by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Mm-hmm. 
And number two was it lowers stress and depression, which we know. Yeah. Number three was it connects you to a community because yes. it gets you out. It does. I mean, every other person that I see with a dog, um, you sp we're speaking to. Yeah. You know, we're going to the dog park. We're, you know, we're talking to other people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking for the chemical compound uh, that it's called that uh, that our, our body releases when we cuddle cuddle dogs and then you know oxytol oxytol <laughs> is it oxytol it's so i'm gonna get there hold on keep talking and then number four <laughs> was it gets you moving and then number five was it's a source of comfort right yes but also it can be stressful owning a dog mo mm -hmm. because you who are a recent dog uh you know co-partner daddy um know how much effort and energy it takes it is. right it's a lot I, I wasn't expecting it i really was not expecting it i because i didn't know it, it's basically a baby that never grows up you know That's and right. and you know you always have to be there for it always. provide for it make sure the behavior is in check like it's a big thing it is a big thing and especially because dogs feed off of your energy so if they feel that you're doing well, they're doing well. If they feel that you're off center, they get off center eventually. So it's something that I did not focus upon because I, I didn't really, I wasn't that close with dogs. I would take care of them every once in a while, but I didn't know what it was like living with a dog half the time, you know? So, um, yeah, sorry, what were you, what was the Oh, I found it. It's, uh, so it's uh, cuddling. Yeah. Also, cuddling a pet releases a cuddle chemical. Isn't that cute? That is cute. Called oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah, in both human and pet, and as well as lowering the levels of the stress hormone, cortisol. Cortisol. Yeah, in our bodies, leading to a calmer approach to life. Okay. But of course, again, so going back to the whole stress and, and you know, sometimes maybe it's too stressful for a person to have a dog because they can't show up for that dog. Right? Exactly. And that's very stressful. Like there's, if, if you're a person who wants to be out and about without your dog all the time, then please don't have a dog, right? Like mm -hmm. it's going to cause you problems. It's the dog's going to be very lonely to me. I've always had many dogs and in my company, I've been so fortunate to always bring them to work with me. I mean, we, I literally spend 24, seven hours, like a day, that's it, like a year. Mm. And, uh, and it's an amazing thing because you see how well developed, how intelligent and how well trained they are because you're spending that time and you're putting that time into something, mm. right? And Ener attention goes where energy grows. And it's like, you just see them flourishing and you want that. It's like a child. That's so right? true. Ro, yeah. Where attention goes, energy flows. Yeah. So it's you know? very important uh, to really spend that copious amount of time with this baby that you have now, you know, your fur baby. Where's right? your fur baby go, oh, by she's, the way? Oh, she's I don't know, hiding underneath somewhere. Oh, look, they're getting along. That's good. Um, the other thing, well, I'm sure everybody's dying to hear this right now. So can your dog be gay? <laughs> and I, you know, I thought this was quite funny because we were saying how, okay, I was being funny and saying, well, listen, if your dog is a female and it's humping a female, your dog is gay. If your dog is a male humping another male, your dog is gay, but there are really not a lot of articles or conclusions yeah. that come to any, anything because of the fact that these are dogs. They're just enjoying each other. And as human beings, we're just dying to label animals as we would label ourselves because it's something that, you know, we find comfort in is labels, right? Mm -hmm. So what is your, what is your thing on this whole gay dog thing? Like, is it I'll a thing you. or is it just, is it, no, what is it? I, I think all animals in general and depending on geographic location, where they come from, um, definitely display, uh, signs of homosexuality, bisexuality, non-productive, reproductive functions. Uh, for example, uh, a domesticated, uh, ram, right. A male sheep mm. will, will not, well, 10% of them will not have sex with the female sheep, the use. Mm. They just, we've heard a story, uh, one, one story, the, the, right. The, the two male penguins who raised orphan eggs. Right. Yeah. So, and then, uh, there's the, uh, baboon, baboon, the females actually masturbate together. 
Mm-hmm. It's a it's a female clan of baboons who hang out, and they just let the males in for reproductive reasons. Oh wow! Yeah, and so when we see dogs displaying, you know, mounting, and I, I think the beautiful thing is this, and I think <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you because um, I want to hear the beautiful thing. <laughs> well, it's because they have no they have no boundaries. And Isn't that we, beautiful? Right. And that's what I'm saying because, you know, it's, it's a proven fact that humans are bisexual. Mm-hmm. And some people will, um, like, that's where it starts. And then I think, you know, through your environment and maybe your soul, you de- decide whether you're fully gay or whether you, you know, I, we've known people swing back and forth, right? Mm-hmm. One minute they're lesbians, next they're straight. We've seen that, right, for many reasons. So, and I think that's a great thing too. I think it, uh, there's, a, there's an ease and grace that goes with that, right? And that's a beautiful way of being. And I think dogs are like that as well. So if they want to hump a male, let them hump a male. Who cares? You know, there's nobody should care. <laughs> well, no, and nobody should care. They don't care, right? Because they don't see it that way. No, right? they see it's, it as the, it's natural behavior. It's natural behavior. That's it's it. animal instinct behavior. That's it. Right? So, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's quite, it's quite interesting. So just to give you a quick answer... Your dog is likely gay. <laughs> well, he's bisexual. Either way, you Come know. Come on, don't push too hard, Momo. <laughs> so, like, okay, so cool. We got that out of the way, and I think hopefully everyone's satisfied with the answer. Um, what do you want to? What do you want to recap? What do you want people to know about? About oh, you want to also talk about COVID nineteen and dogs? Before we yeah. recap, I want uh, before we cap before we yeah. end the show. I want you to talk about that, and I also want you to give people the information on where they can reach you, where they can get your products, you. all that. Um, you know, we've seen through COVID-19 uh, an increase in pet adoption, right? Everybody's okay. alone, and everybody wants a pet. But we have to be really also, we have to still do the research. Mm-hmm. I mean, rescuing a dog doesn't mean you're really rescuing the dog, because you could be a horrible pet owner, right? right. So you could be the wrong owner for this pet who mm. needs something completely different. Um, so there has to be a certain realization within an individual and a serious honesty mm-hmm. as to what they can really provide for an animal and not, right? So that's where it starts there. So yes, but through, through the COVID and through our um, loneliness, um, animals have just become so important. And the, just the fact that we use them as excuses to get out as well, right? Which is really good. Um, I think um, the most important thing that I see, and I, I can't stress this enough, is just don't leave your animal alone too long. And mm. don't leave them caged up. Get the proper training. No dog needs to be in a cage. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's, I've seen, I know I, I was been in the business so long and I know people have done that maybe 10 hours a day Wait, the dogs wait for their owners to come home. And I think, I think that's insanity. And you know, sometimes, sometimes dogs don't like going to daycare. Sometimes they do depending on the dog. So really do your investigation that way to see really if your dog is into it or not and what they're doing for your dog before you spend w- loads of money. Right. So, but that's the most important thing. So feed your dog properly, exercise your dog enough so if you're able to, feed your dog, exercise them, and make sure what you're able to be home often enough. Or you have company for your dog. Dogs live for us. Okay. This is the unconditional love. So you, we have to live for our dogs too, back, or our cats too. You know, it's the same thing. Any animal, even a bird. Mm. There is no animal that loves us that wants to be left alone. Imagine you love a person and they leave you alone. Do you not complain? Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, 100%. You do. And the thing is, like, I've always, people often do get offended um, when I say, listen, like, when I see somebody who is not the greatest dog owner, I say, listen, it's okay. You need to give this dog up. Oh, like, you need to yeah. find a better parent for that. Because it's not you. It's tough. You know, it is totally tough. When people create that emotional attachment and they think that they're a failure if they give the dog up or that, oh, I just, but this dog loves me and I love this dog. Um, wrong answer right you have that's what i was saying you have to be selfless enough to be able to see a reality okay right yeah. and be real yeah and i don't know how often that's happening because i can tell you a lot of people will be like no what are you talking about like they resist the idea that they're anything but like perfect semi- for that animal or yeah. even just semi good owner. they're like oh yeah. well you know i'm just enough of a good owner but i mean it's not enough 
to be enough of a good owner is not enough. To leave your dog alone, to not attend to your dog, to spend time with Otherwise, like, what's the point of having this animal? Another thing that I want to bring um, to light is home breeding. Okay. okay. Please. I am 100% opposed to people breeding dogs at home in the sense of um, A, unlicensed, B, taking advantage of a system and actually, mm. you know, it's like selling life so that they can be compensated monetarily. Mm -hmm. And the conditions sometimes are horrific, mm -hmm. even in uh, non-professional, uh, even in professional breeding, um, you know, yeah. or people, you know, like the puppy mills and things that we've tried to shut down and have successfully done so in uh, many provinces. But, um, you know, just because you love your dog so much, it doesn't give you the right to want to have 20 more of them. <laughs> because it's true. You know, I'm sorry to laugh about that because it's, it's, you know, we, we do take advantage of these animals because they think that their bodies can handle it and then they're not going to be traumatized by the process. Traumatizing but sometimes. they do. Taking their babies away, um, like just so many things. And it's not only that, but it's like, and, and everyone says the same thing. Oh, my parents are taking the puppies or, you know, kittens, whatever, or I've got great homes for them. And then they end up in the shelters. Mm. Okay. And so we have so much overproduction of everything at this point that, you know, it's just not correct. And mm. it's really the government's fault because they should be putting their foot down on this, right? It's animal control. Okay, well, what does animal control mean? It actually means human control mm. because what they're doing is they're controlling the human as, as far as putting dogs on leash all the time to the point where they can't even enjoy running around unless they're in dog only spaces. And I understand that mm -hmm. too, because now we have like 250,000 dogs in the city of Toronto alone. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. So it's great that they've really given us beautiful spaces to, to spend and uh, time with, with our animals. Um, but um, you just, we have to be careful. Just, just be careful about, um, that's crazy. That's like one in every 20 residences in Toronto have a dog. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's just Toronto. Could you imagine? Oh my God, California, New York. Oh my goodness gracious. And then we're importing dogs from everywhere, rescuing them, right? Like all my, a lot of my clients, oh, we got our dog from Taiwan, from Korea, from Japan, from Greece, Mexico. Yeah. Wow, right? Yeah, no, you're here. I mean, I was just at the dog park three days ago and I must have met like within... Two days, I met three people who who had brought a dog uh, back from Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, and so, which is fine. My it, first dog came from Mexico. That's yeah. nice. But so don't breed them. Adopt them if you can. Exactly. That's another. Thing. Don't breed them. Adopt them if you can. There's so many dogs out there that need help, and mm. so yeah, that's really it. I think we just have to be very conscientious about dog and pet ownership, you know, and mm. it starts all in our hearts. And if people look really deep inside whether it's a relationship with a human or an animal, they know the truth. Mm. Yeah. What's right and wrong. 100%. Mm. Because it is your child. I don't care what anybody says. You know what? It's not... People look at dogs like they're lesser. Mm -hmm. But if you have a dog, you need to treat it like your own child. Well, because yeah. it's so goddamn important. And I realize that with the dog, you know, that I have here is... I do kind of look at, I didn't think I could look at a dog that way. It was like, oh my God, like I'm very protective over her. I'm just like, you know, like uh, if she's misbehaving, like I just want her to be her best, most optimal self. Yeah, this is amazing. You know? I mean, so. even like when you call, called the animal communicator, right? It's, uh, two weeks ago. And uh, how was that experience for you? That was incredible. For those who don't know, I ended up calling a dog communicator um, in order to correct uh, her behavior because she was she was a little uh, getting a little aggressive, but it was really just trauma she's experienced over the years, and she's five years old now. Mm -hmm. So and you rescue your your friend rescued her, right? My my friend rescued my friend rescued her, and um, you know, you know, I I guess he wasn't the best owner for the first couple of years. And then you realize, well, I really got to pull up here and I got to do something mm -hmm. about this. So within the last year, he started to take steps, but realized that she wasn't trainable. She's old. So what are you going to do now? You got to remove the trauma if she's going to respond to any type of training, you know? And so we ended up talking to a, a dog trainer named Claudia, which is a friend of yours. Claudia Hare, yeah. Claudia Hare, um, who is actually quite a famous dog communicator mm -hmm. if you look her up. Uh, and I would have to say that it, it pretty much has changed her life. Like we, maybe it was a month ago now, almost a month ago we called her 
And she has done almost a complete 100% turnaround. Yeah, I can and even see it now coming in the space with her. Yeah. She's calm. Mm-hmm. She sits down and eats her food. Like she's sitting and she, she'll eat her food. Um, just, I guess it's just what happens when you surround the dog with love and they know that you're trying to give them the best life and you, you realize you've, you've, you've exhausted every avenue yeah. and, you know, and she's been spoken to by this communicator. Yeah. And that's the part like it's, you know, it, it, not to interrupt you, but be, what is the most important thing in a relationship? It's communication. Right? Yeah. And if, uh, if we don't know how to communicate with our pets, um, like Dr. Doolittle's, which by the way, people can learn how to do that. Claudia even gives courses on that training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the animal needs to be spoken to. The mm-hmm. animal needs to be heard. Mm-hmm. And the animals do um, suffer through emotional breakups. Like in, in your this dog's case, in Athena's case, her, her father died. Mm-hmm. Right. And then was just given up and uh, given to another home. And, you know, again, not the best owner, or maybe, you know, didn't really know what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, is like lost in four walls. Mm-hmm. So imagine. he didn't know what to do. He just took it because it was one of his good friends who had just gone. He's yeah. like, what am I doing? Like, he's never oh, had it's a dog. A very, it's a nice gesture. But so now he's pulled up and she's definitely done a, a complete turnaround. And Amazing. I'm so thank you. Thanks to you, though. Honestly, Ronnie, you really helped us out, and I'm I'm really thankful to that. Oh, it's so. my pleasure. That's the only way I could get on your show. Will. <laughs> <laughs> See, we'd There's find always. a way. We'd find a way to get you on. Don't worry. Um, we have spoken about some, you know, pretty important things. I think here today, and where before we um, end the the episode, where can people contact you? Where can they get your clothing? Where can they get your boots? Yeah. And if it doesn't fit, it's not the boot. No, if it doesn't stay on, it's <laughs> if it not doesn't the stay on, it's not the boot. <laughs> we'll make sure it fits. <laughs> Don't worry, our customer service is awesome, possum. Um, well, so it's spelled N for uh, Norman. So mm-hmm. Neopause, okay, right? pause like the dogs. N e o p a w s dot mm-hmm. com, mm-hmm. and uh, there are numbers all over the website. Um, they can call us and make an appointment to come in for fitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is great. And we have uh, two locations side by side at on River Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, we're fully available and uh, it's always a fun experience. Gosh, I remember, you know, just going back 15 years, we used to have like 25 people standing in line for dog boots on a Saturday. And it would be like that all day long. It's crazy. Yeah, so it is awesome. So now, you know, people have a lot of choice. The balloons are a big thing, right? They're much easier, quote unquote, to deal with, right? The what? Oh, there, there are these balloons. Yeah. I was going to create those like 20 years ago and I thought, what idiot would use a balloon on a like dog? for the <laughs> feet? What, a, what an idiot I am. Never mind. <laughs> Billion dollar business. I Well, no, like, I mean, you have like, don't you have like leather shoes? No, no. The minor uh, solid rubber on the bottom, like running shoes. They literally look like running shoes. Okay. And I'll be taking pictures when I get my dog a pair and I'll be putting them up online. Um, So you guys will be seeing the shoes on the show on YouTube, which is where the show is going. You're welcome. So thank you, Ronnie, for giving us so much. Well, thank you for allowing us to, you know, send the message about people and and you know and just know like your friend Mm. that you know we all make mistakes and Mm. we all learn from our mistakes and Mm. we move forward and upwards so that's really the most important thing so just uh just keep the light you know and and uh, offer the best of you to everything around you and in your life did you guys hear that Mm. all right thank you so much for being on thanks mo and thank you guys for watching and listening ciao (laughs) ciao